Hundred Short Stories by O. Henry. Today's story: A Cosmopolite in a Cafe. At midnight, the cafe was crowded. By some chance, the little table at which I sat had escaped the eye of incomers, and two vacant chairs at it extended their arms with venal hospitality. to the influx of patrons and then a cosmopolite sat in one of them and i was glad for i held a theory that since adam no true citizen of the world has existed we hear of them and we see foreign labels on much luggage but we find travelers instead of cosmopolites I invoke your consideration of the scene the marble topped tables the range of leather upholstered wall seats the gay company the ladies dressed in demi state toilets speaking in an exquisite visible chorus of taste economy opulence or art the sedulous and largest loving garçons the music wisely catering to all with its raids upon the composers the melange of talk and laughter and if you will the words burger in the tall glass cones that bend to your lips as a ripe cherry sways on its branch to the beak of a robber jay i was told by a sculptor from moshang that the scene was truly parisian my cosmopolite was named e rashmore coglan and he will be heard from next summer at coney island he is to establish a new attraction there he informed me offering kingly diversion and then his conversation rang along parallels of latitude and longitude He took the great round world in his hand, so to speak, familiarly, contemptuously, and it seemed no larger than the seed of a maraschino cherry in a table d'hote grapefruit. He spoke disrespectfully of the equator. He skipped from continent to continent. He derided the zones. He mopped up the high seas with his napkin. With a wave of his hand he would speak of a certain bazaar in Hyderabad. Whiff. He would have you on skis in Lapland. Zip. Now you rode the breakers with the kanakas at Kilaikahiki. Presto, he dragged you through an Arkansas post oak swamp, let you dry for a moment on the alkali plains of his Idaho ranch. then walled you into the society of viennese archdukes and on he would be telling you of a cold he acquired in a chicago lake breeze and how old escamilla cured it in buenos aires with a hot infusion of the chuchula weed you would have addressed the letter to e rashmore coglan esquire the earth solar system the universe and have mailed it feeling confident that it would be delivered to him i was sure that i had at last found the one true cosmopolite since adam and i listened to his worldwide discourse fearful lest i should discover in it the local note of the mere globe trotter but his opinions never fluttered or drooped he was as impartial to cities countries and continents as the winds or gravitation and as e rashmore coglan prattled of this little planet i thought with glee of a great almost cosmopolite who wrote for the whole world and dedicated himself to bombay In a poem he has to say 
that there is pride and rivalry between the cities of the earth and that the men that breed from them they traffic up and down but cling to their city's hem as a child to the mother's gown and whenever they walk by roaring streets unknown they remember their native city most faithful foolish fond making her mere breathed name their bond upon their bond and my glee was roused because i had caught mr kipling napping here i had found a man not made from dust one who had no narrow boasts of birthplace or country one who if he bragged at all would brag of his whole round globe against the martians and the inhabitants of the moon expression on these subjects was precipitated from e rashmor coglan by the third corner to our table while coglan was describing to me the topography along the siberian railway the orchestra gleeded into a medley the concluding air was dixie and as the exhilarating notes tumbled forth they were almost overpowered by a great clapping of hands from almost every table it is worth a paragraph to say that this remarkable scene can be witnessed every evening in numerous cafes in the city of new york tons of brew have been consumed over theories to account for it some have conjectured hastily that all sadhanas in town hie themselves to cafes at nightfall this applause of the rebel air in a northern city does puzzle a little but it is not insolvable the war with spain many years generous mint and watermelon crops a few long shot winners at the new orleans restrack and the brilliant banquets given by the indiana and kansas citizens who compose the north carolina society have made the south rather a fad in manhattan your manicure will lisp softly that your left forefinger reminds her so much of a gentleman's in richmond virginia oh certainly but many a lady has to work now the war you know when dixie was being played a dark haired young man sprang up from somewhere with a mosby guerrilla yell and waved frantically his soft brimmed hat then he strayed through the smoke dropped into the vacant chair at our table and pulled out cigarettes the evening was at the period when reserve is thought one of us mentioned three wurzburgers to the waiter the dark haired young man acknowledged his inclusion in the order by a smile and a nod i hastened to ask him a question because i wanted to try out a theory i had would you mind telling me i began whether you are from the feast of e rashmor coglan banged the table and i was jarred into silence excuse me said he but that's a question i never like to hear asked what does it matter where a man is from is it fair to judge a man by his post office address why i have seen kentuckians who hated whiskey virginians who were not descended from pocahontas indianians who hadn't written a novel mexicans who didn't wear velvet trousers with silver dollars sewed along the seams funny englishmen spent thrift yankees cold blooded southerners narrow minded westerners and new yorkers who were too busy to stop for an hour on the street to watch a one armed grocer's clerk do up cranberries in paper bags 
let a man be a man and don't handicap him with the label of any section pardon me i said but my curiosity was not altogether an idle one i know the sound and when the band plays dixie i like to observe i have formed the belief that the man who applauds that air with special violence and ostensible successional loyalty is invariably a native of either secaucus new york or the district between murray hill lyceum and the harlem river this city i was about to put my opinion to the test by inquiring of this gentleman when you interrupted with your own larger theory i must confess and now the dark haired young man spoke to me and it became evident that his mind also moved along its own set of grooves i should like to be a periwinkle said he mysteriously on the top of a valley and sing to ra lu ra lu this was clearly too obscure so i turned again to coclan i have been around the world 12 times said he i know an eskimo in apunavik who sends to cincinnati for his neckties and i saw a goat herder in uruguay who won a prize in a battle creek breakfast food puzzle competition I pay rent on a room in Cairo, Egypt, and another in Yokohama all the year round. I have got slippers waiting for me in a tea house in Shanghai, and I don't have to tell them how to cook my eggs in Rio de Janeiro or Seattle. It's a mighty little old world. What's the use of bragging about being from the north or the south? or the old manor house in the dell or euclid avenue cleveland or pike's peak or fairfax county virginia or hooligans flats or any place it will be a better world when we quit being fools about some mild dude town or 10 acres of swampland just because we happen to be born there You seem to be a genuine cosmopolite I said admiringly but it seems that you would decry patriotism a relic of the stone age declared Coglan warmly we are all brothers chinamen englishmen zulus patagonians and the people in the bend of the kor river some day all this pretty pride in one city or state or section or country will be wiped out and we all will be citizens of the world as we ought to be but while you are wandering in foreign lands i persisted do not your thoughts revert to some spot some dear and near a spot interrupted er coglan flippantly the terrestrial globular planetary hunk of matter slightly flattened at the poles and known as the earth is my abode i have met a good many object bound citizens of this country abroad i have seen men from chicago sit in a gondola in venice on a moonlight night and brag about their drainage canal I have seen a southerner on being introduced to the king of England hand that monarch without batting his eyes the information that his grand aunt on his mother's side was related by marriage to the parkinses of charleston I knew a new yorker who was kidnapped for ransom by some afghanistan bandits His people sent over the money and he came back to Kabul with the agent. Afghanistan the native said to him through an interpreter. Well not so slow do you think? 
oh i don't know says he and he begins to tell them about a cab driver at 6th avenue and broadway those ideas don't suit me i am not tied to anything that isn't 8000 miles in diameter just put me down as e rushmore cogland citizen of the terrestrial sphere my cosmopolite made a large adieu and left me for he thought that he saw someone through the chatter and smoke whom he knew so i was left with the would be periwinkle who was reduced to worse burger without further ability to voice his aspirations to perch melodious upon the summit of a valley i sat reflecting upon my evident cosmopolite and wondering how the poet had managed to miss him he was my discovery and i believed in him how was it the men that breed from them they traffic up and down but cling to their city's hem as a child to the mother's gown not so e rushmore coglan with the whole world for his my meditations were interrupted by a tremendous noise and conflict in another part of the cafe i saw above the heads of the seated patrons e rushmore coglan and a stranger to me engaged in terrific battle they fought down the tables like titans and glasses crashed and men caught their hats up and were knocked down and a brunette screamed and a blonde began to sing teasing my cosmopolite was sustaining the pride and reputation of the earth when the waiters closed in on both combatants with their famous flying wedge formation and bore them outside still resisting i called mccarthy one of the french garçons and asked him the cause of the conflict the man with the red tie that was my cosmopolite said he got hot on account of things said about the hum sidewalks and water supply of the place he come from by the other guy why said i he will dead that man is a citizen of the world a cosmopolite he originally from matwam cake mine he said continued mccarthy and he wouldn't stand for no knocking the place